It's one o'clock. It's yeah, yours. Right. I'm going to the back. And, uh, I'm going to steal. Yeah, you have two what? seconds. No I want to introduce you. This is Mike McMahon. Mike is our expert on, uh, he's going to teach you some things that you need to know so you will sound like right. You know, Wait, I mean, if you can to take this class and think winter class and walk out of here, you ought to be able to use the right terminology so you can impress all your friends who are not involved in photography. So you can choose terms like f-stop and iso and shutter speed. And, and, you know, you'll have a rough idea of what they mean when we get done today. But it'll impress people when you say, okay. I just change the associate. I just changed the shutter speed because, you know, we were at a baseball game. So it sounds good. And But honestly, I'm being a jokester here. Honestly, what we're doing or what's happening is that I don't care if you're working on an iPhone, an Android phone, any kind of camera. There are three basic things happening somewhere in the background. And the camera is regulating the amount of light coming in using those things. You're trying and to Mike's steal my gonna, whole lecture? I'm stealing your whole lecture. And Mike's going to explain all the details today. And when you leave, you're going to be good. You'll be so knowledgeable. You'll be scary, man. And then next week, we're going to kick it up a notch. And we're going to bring Linda Gregory in. And Linda's going to show you about all the composition tricks. And at that point, you won't be a photographic artist. So we're taking you a step further. You're going to be amazing. So basically, I'm turning it over to Mike. Um, and the mechanics of this, we have some new people that just signed up. So I will repeat the handouts from last week, again this week. So if you get a second, you already have one. Don't pay it. I'm just doing it so anybody who came in I'm late for the class can pick up the handouts from last week. We did not record the Zoom meeting last week because basically you were getting a tour of the building and it's kind of hard to carry Zoom around and tour the building. So we were GoPro jeeps. <laughs> yeah, I did a lot of things. But well, you didn't see how it looked like. I've seen it for a long time. Yeah, I understand. I shut too up. I screwed everything up. But we were good. So, if Mike, it's all yours, buddy. Uh, thanks, Jim. Uh, again, uh, my name is Mike. Man, my my uh, background is uh, I taught at a community college for about 30 years. And then uh, when I retired from that, I started doing uh, uh, lectures on uh, on how to prepare for a professional exam, the national exam. So uh, I'm basically a ham. Uh, I, I'm very comfortable in front of audiences. And uh, and you might find my, my style uh, somewhat offensive. Uh, officially let me apologize, you know, and I see I've got to move this chair because I never stay in one place, okay, for very long. Uh, one thing I do encourage is questions, okay? Now, I taught, you know, older teenagers, you know, freshmen in the community college. I taught some adults and so on and so forth. Um, and I used to ask a question to the group. Uh, given an option, which would you prefer to be? Stupid or ignorant? How many people want ignorant? Yeah, you can fix it. Keep going, guys. Keep going. Okay. The big difference between stupid and ignorant stupid is forever. Ignorant is reversible. Okay. Uh, and how do you how do you uh, reverse ignorance? By asking stupid questions. Uh, uh, no. The standard line: There's no such thing as a stupid question. Okay. All right. And and I I definitely won't embarrass anybody if they ask a question by gagging or laughing my butt off. Okay. Uh, Can we embarrass ourselves? Pardon? Can we embarrass ourselves? Oh yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> it's a try. It's a try. Uh, I I generally try and try and talk straight. Uh, sometimes I don't think I talk as fast as I used to, but uh, sometimes the more excited about a subject I get, the faster I talk and the louder I get. 
and I'm generally loud enough without uh, without projecting. So uh, hopefully that won't be an issue. Uh, and I'm of the ilk that that believes if you can't uh, dazzle them with brilliance, back them with bullshit. Okay, <laughs> that's not. I'm sorry if I, if that word bothered anybody. You know. Uh, Give me a break. Uh, I'm old and I don't really care too much about certain things. Um, so, and also, I, I'm a firm believer in laughing enhances learning. And that's not a joke, that's for real. Okay. Uh, laughing lightens you up, makes your brain open to ideas, and uh, uh, you have a tendency to learn more. Okay, so I haven't done one of these in about a year or so, so I got to figure out what my equipment is doing. There we go. Okay, we're going to talk about now. You have the lecture notes. The main thing, the most important thing on the lecture notes, is the um, the notes themselves. And see, I had it all set this afternoon where I was going to have my lecture notes on here, and the screen would be up here. You know. So you'd see my presentation, I'd be able to look at my lecture notes. Uh, but now, see, I don't have that luxury. So I'm gonna have to wing out the top of my head. And I know pretty much most of this, and you guys can correct me, because what I'm gonna give you is a bunch of numbers right now. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna talk about different types of cameras. Uh, first one up there is, is uh, DSLR, okay? Uh, stands for, um, Digital uh, single lens reflex. It basically was the gold standard for years uh, on digital photography. Uh, I got my first digital camera at, at a Sam's Club, I think around 2000 or something like that. We had 1.1 meg megapixel, and it was made by Kodak. I gave it to my grandkids. He never heard what happened to it. But uh, but prices on DSLRs can range from anywhere around $400 to Eight thousand, seven thousand. Okay, so uh, and they they are they used to be the gold standard. Uh, one thing is 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 caught up to it, and that is the mirrorless camera. All right, uh, mirrorless pretty much now is considered equal to your best DSLRs. Okay, uh, probably a gold standard at one time was Nikon eight fifty. I believe it was. Okay, um, but uh, I switched over to Sony Digital probably about three or four years ago. Um, and I like digital, it does a good job. Uh, it's, uh, um, it's fun to work with. And uh, I'm, I was talking to my granddaughter when I was home at Christmas time, and she's a bit of a photography buff. And she said, well, I, I tried doing film. I said, really? I want to I do film. I said, do you realize you're maxed out at about, used to be 36 shots with a full frame 35 millimeter camera. It generally took about four or five days to get a process. And then in, you can look at them. But the problem is it doesn't give you the information about the f-stop you use, the shutter speed you use, the ISO, what the image looks like, the histogram looks so I said, you could go ahead and go with film if you want, but you'll be back to digital really soon. You know, I mean, uh, it, it just the comparison is is uh, five years ago, eight years ago, there was a bit of a uh, difference. Not so much anymore. Pretty much uh, uh, digital photography is equal to film. Uh, so mirrorless prices, um, when I, when I uh, decided to probably buy my last camera, Okay, uh, I took out a small business loan and mortgage to my home <laughs> yeah. uh, and bought the uh, Sony A1, okay, which uh, was uh, oh, about 6,500 bucks. Uh, but I have no other vices. I don't drink, I don't smoke anymore. I don't run around with wild women other than my wife, okay? And, uh, and we don't run very far anymore. <laughs> so um, so I, uh, the only thing I invest money in is one thing that, that is interesting to think about when you are purchasing uh, cameras is size of the camera. For most individuals, it's not a factor, okay? 
I wear an extra large glove. I'm five foot five. Okay. And by the way, the stories they tell about it is not true. <laughs> None of that is true. Okay. But I have a very large hand. So when I bought my Sony A1, I had to buy a better grip for it because my bottom two fingers hang out on the bottom of the camera. And that does not help stability. So one of the things hopefully you'll pick up today is that there's more than purchase a camera than megapixels, okay, and the brand name. So again, mirrorless you can go is, you know, probably pick one up for three, four hundred dollars. Uh, and you can go, I think by the time I bought my uh, battered grip and a lens, it was over 10 grand. Okay. Uh, now that's again, as I say, it's my only vice. I'm not saying you should do that. Uh, my wife wonders whether I should do that, but uh, yes, sir. What is the principal difference or benefit of going mirrorless? Mirrorless, uh, the, it's a fallacy. First thing is that it's lighter. Okay, now I'm a bird photographer, I'm a nature photographer. Okay, I run around with a 200, 600 millimeter lens. That combined with my A1 body probably runs seven pounds. Now, seven pounds doesn't sound like a lot of weight. <laughs> well, when you're walking around the field for five, six hours, okay, uh, it can be a real issue. So the advantage of, of mirrorless, I think, is the, uh, the autofocus. We'll talk about these in more detail in a minute. The autofocus is much, much improved. Matter of fact, my camera will do bird eye focus it will actually focus directly on the eye of a bird. The uh, Canon R5 uh, and some of the other, other models do have that also. Um, so that to me is a very important thing. So, and I think uh, what they're talking about is now the mirrorless is pretty much replacing the DSLR, okay? Uh, and the mirrorless generally require a um, uh, a different lens mount and so on and so forth. But the uh, the focus with uh, the digital is, is much, much better than it is with the DSLR. Uh, also, what you see through the lens, okay, is what you're seeing. With a, a DSLR, what you looked for was through a mirror, okay? You could not see what the actual image was. They had a little button on the side you push and say, it would show you depth of field. It would also be pretty dark and so on and so forth. So the advantage of mirrorless is you can actually see what you're shooting uh, real time, okay? Uh, also, with a DSLR, when you took a picture, you lost sight of the image for a brief period of time, the length of time of your shutter speed. And I, I shoot a lot of times it's one four thousandth of a second, okay? Uh, that's not gonna be an issue with the DSLR because it's so rapid. But another thing is understanding what the limitations are and what the differences are. Did I answer your question, sir? Thank you. All right, so bridge camera, what's that? Bridge camera is uh, kind of a, a super duper point and shoot. Uh, I'm sure most of you at one time or maybe still have point and shoot cameras. Okay, they're the digital, little, you know, uh, Canon, Sony, whatever. Okay, but uh, but I have a uh, a mirrorless camera. Uh, it's not really mirrorless. It's called a bridge camera. Okay, that's a Sony. Okay, this bridge camera ran about seventeen hundred dollars. It's a very expensive bridge camera. This camera will have a focal length. If you don't know what focal length, ask me, okay? A focal length of between 24 and 600 millimeters. So I take this on vacation. I bring it every time I come to the camera club to do a lecture of my SIG, I always bring it with me because oftentimes I'll stop by the pond on the way back to my condo to take some pictures. So this produces excellent quality, quality photographs. Several I do a bird photography SIG on Wednesdays. And uh, several of the individuals within the SIG have nothing but a bridge camera. And both of them, the two in the SIG, have the same bridge camera I do. 
That is the highest rated bridge camera there is. And that's something we're going to talk about more as we go on. Because when you start thinking about purchasing a camera, the cost can vary greatly. Okay. And um, you've got to decide are you really going to use the capabilities of that camera? So, bridge camera, again, they can run as much as $1,700, or you can get them for $400, $500, something like that. Okay. Then we got a point and shoot. Most of us have those. That's the kind of thing I used to take on vacation and stuff. Now, most of us use our uh, digital phones, cell phones. Excuse me, my mouth is getting dry. So, uh, so I think point and shoot is pretty much replaced by your cell phones. And point and shoot can be anywhere from you know hundred bucks to maybe five, six hundred bucks. Okay, so cell phone. I use a cell phone. Oh, the only time I use a cell phone for photography is when I want to send a picture, put it on Facebook, send to my grandkids or my kids, you know, uh, and it's quick and dirty. I can do it. I don't have to go around because when I shoot uh, pictures on birding trips and so on and so forth, I shoot in a format called RAW. Okay. RAW is very big file and contains a phenomenal amount of information. So we're gonna talk about the other one in a while called JPEG. And my recommendation to most of you I'm gonna make, if you're new to this, and especially a new camera, go with JPEG. But again, we'll talk about in more detail. And cell phone, I didn't even buy the put price on cell phones, hell, they can vary. I think uh, I get the super duper cell phone and it, it's like 1500 bucks or something like that. But I didn't buy it as a camera, I bought it as basically a personal organizer and so on and so forth. Okay, now we're going to talk about the DSLR. What, what the advantage, I talked about some of the advantages in the past was considered excellent quality. Nikon was the name. Uh, up until probably about five years ago, there were two primary uh, camera uh, suppliers, Canon and Nikon. Uh, actually, I picked up the first DSLR. I got, I bought a Canon back in 2011. Okay. And, uh, it was a great job. But then I decided to switch. What actually made me switch from DSLR to, uh, digital was the fact that I was waiting for Canon to come out with a 7D Mark III. Yeah, I, it's it's. I don't want to get into details just, just yet, but it was a, a wildlife or bird photography. Okay, so what I did is I was looking for a new Canon because I like Canon, and then I started reading about they they came out with something in ninety D or something like that. It didn't appeal to me. I wanted another seven D, right? So I started uh, researching. By the way, uh, how many people here use Google or YouTube? Okay, uh, Google is your friend. If I've got a question about how to do anything on my computer, my phone, my camera, I go to Google. If I want to get instructed about it, I go to YouTube, okay? Uh, those two things are of phenomenal value to you, okay? Uh, mirrorless, again, I think is, uh, I talked about, I got ahead of myself. I talked about some of the advantages. Okay. Uh, bridge camera, we did that already. Okay. So let's move on. Okay. Now, this is a picture of my, uh, uh, actually, that's my uh, stepson, my daughter in law, best daughter in law in the world. Uh, and uh, my redheaded granddaughter, I used to call my little redhead girl. She's not so little anymore. She, look at the height difference between her and me. Uh, and that's my uh, grandson, Gavin. Why did I put this up? Well, these are the kinds of pictures as grandparents, I'm sure several of you are, okay? Take pictures of your grandkids. And this was, uh, I think last Christmas, not this one, uh, I shot at home. So those are the kind of pictures, point and shoots are good. Actually, uh, phones are great, okay, for this type of thing. Uh, I use my uh, camera, I put it on a tripod, okay? So uh, 
so I can get in the picture. Uh, I've only fell about three or four times running to get in the picture. Uh, unfortunately, I never got a memory of me falling. So, you know, this is like, if this is the type of photography you do, that's all you do, okay? You're fine with the cell phone, probably. But I would always back up with at least a point and shoot, okay? Because uh, there are limitations to a cell phone. I love this. I'm, I, I'm, you know, uh, up in Madeira Canyon shooting something. I have this person with an iPad doing this, and, and a bird's flying back and forth on the, you know. And the guy or gal is trying to get a picture, and they may get lucky, okay? But I hate shooting with a camera, well, excuse me, a cell phone or an iPad because I can't see. I'm used to a um, viewfinder. How many people use viewfinders? Okay. I, I, when people, you know, my granddaughter gets a digital camera and she's got, she borrowed my A1 one time. Okay. I was there. I would not let her go unsupervised with my camera. But she was looking at the back, uh, the little LCD screen. I, it makes me crazy. I can't do it. You know? so, anyway, so, and I call these artsy fartsy shots. Okay, all the pictures up here are ones that I shot. Okay, that's a gray egret I shot at the Canoe Range Pond. That's a um, some ticonderoga or some some kind of cactus. I don't know what it starts with P, and that's about a, all I've got. That was shot at Desert Museum. But these are pictures you could mount, you could get a canvas on, you could you know share with others, put it on a card. My wife's into carding now. Uh, put it on the, the front of a card or something like that. So this is another type of library. The chances of you getting, these are pretty stagnant. Uh, you could get the uh, one on the right with uh, with a cell phone probably. Uh, you could get the one on the left, depending, okay, how far away you were. I was probably on the other side of the pond when I shot that. So, uh, and what I'm trying to say is there are decisions one, why you would purchase certain kinds of cameras and lenses, okay? So that's another type of option you might have. This is another one I was on vacation with both friends of ours, okay, in Chicago. And we went to a, uh, a museum, Natural Science Museum or something in Chicago. And I took this inside and I think I took it with my, uh, uh, my uh, RX-10 IV. Uh, that's my super zoom light of the um, uh, bridge camera. By the way, if I if I come up and I, I pause for a second, I probably forgot a word. I know like my own name, okay? <laughs> and sometimes I even forget my own name. So uh, one of the reasons I uh, stopped uh, lecturing professionally is I would do lectures on very sophisticated medical procedures and such, and you're standing in front of, you know, an audience of 30 people with, who have just graduated from school and, and, all, and you stand there and start sputtering about something, you know, like, it's your name, right? And, and they kind of start judging you. So I, I kind of decided maybe it was time for me to, to give it up, so I did. See, I can do this now. They're not paying me for this. <laughs> so if I suck, yeah, you know, uh, you're not losing any money over this. Okay. Uh, but certainly, I, I hope you will get something out of this, other than the fact maybe you don't want to come to one of my lectures again. Um, this is another type. Uh, this was, uh, how many people are familiar with that? Yeah. It's in Washington, D.C. It's, uh, it's a memorial or an honor to nurse in the Vietnam War. Okay, and um, actually I was stationed in D.C. in 60, I think it was 69, 70, I can't remember, about 70, I guess. The wall didn't exist back, back then. You know, where the nursing wall, and, well, we were still getting killed back then, you know, uh, so they would have names to put on the wall. So, um, uh, and I find shots like this um, emotionally moving. Okay, it's not a very good image. I would work on it. I'd probably go black and white or something on this. Okay, but uh, this is another thing. Uh, like when we went to DC, I took a ton of pictures. You know, one of the most fascinating things was the FDR um, 
memorial or, or I don't know what it's called a memorial. It's a memorial. Or, yeah, it, that was fascinating. But um, so that yeah, chronicle of vacation or something like that. Okay, another one is nature. Okay, I like things. We got all kinds of seats up here if anybody's oh, interested. Just, yeah. Oh, just giving a tour, eh? Okay. Um, another one. Uh, it's my area of expertise, I guess, one of a better term, is shooting uh, birds, butterflies. Uh, and sometimes you don't have any birds or butterflies around, so uh, I will shoot dragonflies. And a real challenge is get a dragonfly in flight. Okay, that's, uh, that's a real challenge. But uh, uh, that's my area, that's my love, my passion. Okay, that in birds. Okay, now that generally requires something a little bit more than a point and shoot or a cell phone. Actually, you can do it with a bridge camera, a good quality bridge camera. Okay. But oftentimes, you know, it requires a camera a little bit more sophisticated than that. Okay. And this is not a very good example of landscape. I just, I was kind of desperate when I was putting this together and I didn't want to dig into my, uh, I've got about 70,000 pictures, so I, I didn't want to dig for a real great one. So this is obviously elephant head. These are great. You can do this with cell phones, I, you know. Uh, if you've got a, a static object, cell phones are fantastic. Okay, now let's get into cameras a little bit. Okay, first thing you need to do is when you buy a camera, you've got to understand the camera. Okay, I had, uh, when I started doing my SIG about four years ago, I had a guy and he's been with the SIG since, a terrific guy, and he couldn't understand why his camera was so slow. And I said, well, Ron, I said, what kind of uh, memory card do you have it? Uh, I don't know. I said, how fast is the memory card? Uh, Read and write speed. I need people who are aware that a memory card controls. I don't care if you've got a Sony A1. If you've got a crappy memory card in or a very slow memory card in, it's useless. you got no better than a lousy point and shoot. Why? Because you have to match the capabilities of your camera with. The memory card because the camera takes the picture but the memory card stores the picture and how long it takes to take that that image from the sensor to the memory card determines how fast that camera can function and you have cameras now that can do up to 30 frames a second mine can do 30 frames. i have done that never okay <laughs> I, I, oh man, I get carpal tunnel from deleting photos. So, uh, 30 frames of time, they say, shoot as fast as you can. Well, the thing is, is, is one thing you don't think about is suddenly you go home and you got 12,000 pictures. Okay. Now, I was, we went to Whitewater Draw at a camera club last week. And we had gone, I don't know, it was last year or two years ago. Okay. And I went there and inside of 45 minutes, I shot 15,000 That was last year. Last year? Yeah. Was last year. yeah. Uh, and the thing, that brings up another point, okay? My camera has 50 megapixels. Those files are big. So you can't get away with a 16 gig memory card, okay? So you have to know the capabilities of your camera and what kind of activity. If you're shooting an activity like sports or birds, or wildlife, okay, you need a memory card that's fast and also has storage room, okay? And the best idea is not to go on, you know, Walmarts or Amazon and buy the cheapest card you can get. You ever heard that phrase, you get what you pay for? Okay, uh, it's like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to give an analogy, but um, I'm not coming up too good right now as far as an analogy goes. The next one's referring to the buttons on your camera. You got a ton of buttons, okay? We take a look at this, okay? 
It's got buttons, it's got dial, okay? All kinds of stuff, all right? So you gotta know what those buttons are, are for, what they do, okay? So another thing involved in purchasing a camera, it's like when you purchase a computer, okay? I've been a geek since about 1984. Okay, I got my first computer in 1984 was an Apple IIe. Okay, so I started doing lectures with something called Linkway, which was a precursor to PowerPoint in 1985. Okay, so you've got to know when you buy a piece of equipment like a computer, you know, you walk into Best Buy and this young fella comes up, and say, hey, how you doing? You know, uh, what do you need? Yeah, you got to have this, you got to have that. You know, you need this memory and this speed. My son is a is a network manager, self-taught. Okay. He tore my Apple IIe apart when I was working one day. Okay. Um he did put it back together. God bless his little heart, I think. By the way, he's got a little heart. Uh, the kid is six foot six. And, and people, is he really your son? <laughs> Yeah, of course, people say, how can that be? My ex-wife is five foot three. How does that work? Well, there's about eight genes for tallness, okay? And that sucker got them all. <laughs> okay, he got them all. And he's, he uh, used to play semi-pro football. And he used to tip sail about 450 pounds. Uh, big guy. I, uh, I still tell him I can kick his ass. But I'm gonna get on a stool, stool to start. Okay, because uh, it's it's uh, he's a big guy. Now, mode shooting modes. We're gonna talk about shooting modes a little bit detail. Yes, sir. Back on the last issue. Sure. Where does the camera owner find the specifications for the card? Where where do you learn? They actually the county card. And uh, uh, on the card, oh, yeah, the card itself, it gives its read, write speed, and so on and so forth. Okay, um, but you said it should match your camera, so well, first of all, you got to learn the camera specs, and how do you do that? Don't ask anybody, uh, you can go to a camera store, they may know, okay, but don't ask somebody at Best Buy or Walmart or someone, they don't know what the hell they're talking. I'm sorry, they don't, okay. You're talking about pieces of a I can't even get the damn camera out. This is this is an SD card. Okay. Here, let me show it. Didn't pass around, just don't lose it. I got photos on it. <laughs> and don't touch the gold. And you I hope you are right now. Oh, oh yeah. Exactly. You you shoot Ross, so you're 128. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because I always buy 16. I thought not I thought by the least amount. You oh no no buy a lot of storage oh yeah absolutely but okay. one thing it's interesting i know people who would buy a memory card when it got filled well they took it out and stored it they put it in a lockbox or something like that they got their house broke into somebody store stole the lockbox and every every picture had gone okay also that's terribly inefficient okay uh the thing is, when I get done with the shoot, the first thing I do when I get home that night, I don't care how tired I am, I stick it in my card reader and I upload them. And I don't keep them on my computer. I keep them on a, a separate hard drive. I got a four terabyte SSD card that stands for, uh, it basically is, is a, uh, uh, a hard drive that has no moving parts. So I really tell it's a... What's that now? Sound 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 Thank you very much. See what I mean? I knew, and I'm saying S S D. I can't. And I, I didn't want to waste a whole lot of time trying to come up with this. <laughs> I knew somebody out there would would correct my ignorance. So yeah. Uh, so I back it up. Plus I back up to another hard drive. Uh, I've got an eight terabyte backup drive, a twelve terabyte no, user card. Oh. Problem with clouds. They dissipate. You know, uh, what I'm, I'm what I'm saying is 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 how reliable is that cloud going to be? You know, and I'm just saying, what happens if uh, if Adobe goes out of business? 
what if there's uh, a magnetic pulse? You know, the things they talk about. Sunspot. Yeah. yeah. For instance, everything. Okay. So I keep my own online hard drive. Okay. Um, so I find that's the best way to do it. But not backing up your photos is a big mistake. Another thing, and we're going to talk about it later, is you need to have a way of organizing your photo. Okay. Like I say, I got 70,000 photos. Okay. They're all organized. All right. And but we'll talk about that a little bit later. But again, let's talk about modes just briefly. What are the modes? The modes are how much. Yeah. Um, it, it basically tells you how much you're letting the camera do for you, how much yeah. thinking it does for you. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, how many people shoot auto? <laughs> hey, no, no judgment here. Okay, no judgment here. Auto, auto is nice auto is easy i wouldn't say it's lazy okay i might think it's but i would not say that okay auto everybody thinks auto is is, is so easy i'll tell you what you know what i shoot i shoot manual with floating iso and we'll talk about what that is okay why because that gives me total control over what the camera does except for my iso and I have a, a good enough camera that the ISO is not a big issue. And uh, how many people have heard of Topaz Labs? Anybody? Yes, they have a little, little piece of software called, um, what is it? Topaz Denoise AI. AI stands for artificial intelligence. And that has saved more photographer butts in the last year than you can believe. Because what it does, it corrects the biggest problem you have with a high ISO, which is noise. Okay, so auto, I shoot manual. There's something called um, shutter prior. Yes. Um, I know this, but they might not know what you mean by noise. Oh, and I was going to talk about that oh, when we got sorry. a little further. That, that's all right. Noise, but how many people shot? Film and new grain. You might have heard of graininess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the digital equivalent is noise. That it has to do with, uh, and when you look at the picture, it looks, uh, for one better term, they could have called it grain, but they called it noise. Uh, and it's associated with, uh, with low light. Okay. So let's see, we got shutter priority, we have aperture priority. And there are people who will swear up and down, oh, you always have to do after priority. And uh, one thing that I learned in my brief lifetime is anybody who gives you an absolute is generally full of poop. <laughs> okay? Because there ain't no absolutes. All right? It depends on the situation. It depends on what you want to do. So... Uh, photography can be extremely complex. And that's one of the things I love about it. Okay, it keeps my mind busy. So there are options, learn what the options are good for. And we'll talk about those in a few minutes. Um, so be careful with absolute. Oh, you always need to shoot at this. You always need to shoot at that. Uh, be careful. Uh, and take anybody who gives you an absolute with a grain of salt, me included. If I give you an absolute, call me on it, will you please? I appreciate it. Um, also, there's another mode called program mode. I mean, I get up and rest. Uh, uh, another program mode that kind of, uh, uh, kind of lets the computer of the uh, camera determine everything, okay? The problem with the, the difference between auto and uh, program is auto, you're locked in. You can't change shutter speed. You can't change f-stop. You can't change exposure compensation. We'll talk about exposure compensation later on. Okay, so you are locked in. You have no option. 
uh, programming, there's a little adjustment you can make. So those are your modes. This, uh, Gene was talking about three things that affect your photos. Do you have a question, man? No? No, she was, she was educating me. Oh. You can ask me. I don't bite, and, and I'll I'll run a roll. No, no. I can't see to me the the response of the attendees or the audience. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm I'm totally newbie. Okay, good. And so half the terms you use, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. I might as well be in a nuclear. <laughs> No, I did. I did. I didn't want to interrupt you. Slightly more than him. I've been shooting pictures since 1960. But you know what those little things are? That was all I was well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see that. These are just an introduction. You know the old thing, repetition is the mother of learning, right? So you the old phrase used to be. Tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them and tell them what you told them. Okay? So repetition is the key. But don't hesitate to ask. Because I guarantee you, there's at least five other people in this room who haven't got a tell. Oh, I know that. <laughs> I know that from all my years steeping. Okay. Right. And, and you shouldn't have to sit there. And what for what? Assuming that's your wife. <laughs> You want me to go to the detention? <laughs> no, 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 I'm serious. I, if I'm using words you don't know, you have a responsibility to tell me because I don't read mine. Okay, I'm going to jump back to him. Good. His question about the memory card. Yes. And he was asking where you learned it, and you were showing him a memory card, and he said yeah. everything there. Wouldn't the manual of the camera that came with the camera tell you anything that you might want to know? Uh, it may, you uh, most manuals out, you get what's called a startup guide. Okay, oh, yeah. it's about three pages, maybe. maybe. Okay, yeah. now they say you can go to the website and download the manual. Yep, yeah. and then pages, and and then it. Oh, actually, the manual is oftentimes 150 to 200 pages, yeah. and it's like wading through three feet of whale poop. Okay, it's just an extremely difficult to deal with. So what you do is actually YouTube is a godsend. Go to YouTube or Google first. Uh, I'm thinking about getting a, a Sony A7 IV. Uh, where are its capabilities so I know what, or what kind of memory card should I get for that? And what you're going to do, or Facebook, the same thing. I'm a member of about four or five different photography groups based on camera on Facebook. So that will help you. Purchasing a camera to me is, is as difficult, if not more difficult, than purchasing a car. Okay? Because, I mean, you're, you know, I mean, uh, I probably have probably $25,000, $30,000 worth of camera gear. Okay. And that's crazy, I know. Okay. Uh, but it is what it is. That's okay. over my allowance. Well, yeah. And see, <laughs> see, the thing is, it's, it's my wife and I have an understanding. So when she wanted binoculars, she's a bird, okay? When she wanted new binoculars, I took her to, uh, I want one. Something like you know, links, uh, sporting good or, or nature stores, you know, whatever. And we bought Swarovski binoculars, three thousand dollars. Okay, I didn't bat an eye. <laughs> she didn't say anything. <laughs> so what I do is I make sure that and, and that she's happy because you know then I can be happy. Okay. And I do all the cooking and stuff like that. And she's recovering from a total hip right now. So uh, so I'm doing a lot of stuff around the house. So let's go back. Uh, the I was about to call it the Bermuda Triangle, but uh, it's uh, it's called the Exposure Triangle. It's back on that last slide. I go back to it, but I feel like it. Because uh, we're going to talk about it again. The exposure Triangle, exposure triangle involves Three components of a picture. How, how much light comes in, that's the f-stop. How long that light is exposed to the sensor, that's the shutter speed. And how sensitive that sensor is to light, that's 
quality, I guess you could think of. So there's three components that we control that basically define what's involved in um, the exposure triangle. This is just an idea of, of uh, those are comparative sensor sizes. Um, the, um, uh, the first one is a basic, excuse me, the second one is what we call full frame. Full frame is the equivalent of 35 millimeter uh, image in a camera. So that's the standard. When they talk about full frame, we're talking about 35 millimeter. Okay. Then we've got, well, let's see if my uh, pointer is going to work. Nope. Not at all. Oh, excuse me. Um, <laughs> Do I see a bad word? I'm so the thing uh, you need to think about is, do you want a full frame? If you do want a full frame, okay, it's going to be more expensive. Okay. Uh, the other one that's extremely common is next to it's called APSC. Don't ask me what it means. I memorized it multiple times. I can't remember. But basically, it's a smaller size sensor. Okay. That's called a crop sensor. And we're going to talk about equivalence as far as size of an image a little bit later. Yes, sir. Automatic photography system. Thank you very much. Thank you. Honestly, I didn't know that one time. Well, they came out with this format about 20 years ago and it never went anywhere because digital started yeah. taking over. Yeah. Now, actually, um, uh, I shot uh, as a bird photographer, I shot APSC for good seven, eight years, and then I switched to uh, full frame. So, but my bias is full frame. I like full frame, you know, but that's me. Okay. Uh, raw versus JPEG. I'm sorry, the little word is covered there, and, and I'm afraid to touch it because I probably screw something up. So I don't want to do that. Uh, and here they give you kind of an example. A raw file is uh, is like the 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 egg, okay? And you got all everything in the egg that you need to make, you know, scrambled eggs, or whatever. Okay. JPEG on the other hand, how many people shoot JPEG? How many people should raw? Okay. Uh, how many know the difference? Okay, good. Uh, when I do a class like this, I recommend uh, newbies, you know, shoot Jacob. Because especially when you've got a new camera, okay? You've got so much to learn that the last thing you want to be worrying about is post-processing images after a shoot, okay? What you want to be looking at when you look at your image, by the way, I always recommend looking at your images the same evening of your shoot, okay? And the nice thing about digital is it tells you exactly shutter speed, f-stop, uh, ISO, uh, focal length, uh, how much exposure compensation you use? Did you get all those words? <laughs> you know what any of them mean? Yeah, yeah, you know what I got that. Uh, um, tell me the officially the dunce. Uh, no, 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 when you go in, the first thing you do with your new camera is what? So, date, okay, time, time zone, okay, and then it tells you quality of images. What do you want? You want high quality, you want medium quality, so on and so forth, okay? That's generally a point where you start thinking about whether you want to do raw or jacket. Okay, so yeah, you set all this. So if you grab a new camera and you round, you put a memory card on and go out and fire away, okay, um, uh, if, if uh, that probably would not be your most beneficial activity. Okay, I, I've done it myself. Everybody has. Well, I want to see what it does. You know, but the thing is, there's, there's things you need to learn and understand. It's like learning how to drive your car, learning where, how to turn your headlights on automatic. Because it varies. I drive a Mini Cooper, my wife drives a Ford, right? It varies. So knowing what the car, how to run the car, how to use the car, 
is pretty much very similar to what you deal with in trying to deal with a camera. So you want more information on RAW versus JPEG, Google. <laughs> or even better yet, you can get a lecture on, on YouTube telling you about RAW and JPEG. Okay? Um, here again, it's just another, it's a uh, look at Nikon versus Canon, the dials on top. Uh, this is the dial on my RX-10 4 okay? And if you take a look at it, it'll tell you, okay, what those modes are, aperture priority, shutter priority, manual, uh, automatic, uh, uh, that some have uh, intelligent, automatic so uh those are things you need to look at and the information is there uh the gentleman asked about a manual okay uh what i generally do is i go to a third party book written uh i bought uh the a1 and the third party book was 700 pages long okay and I had before the A1, I had an A92. And that manual was, that book was 650 pages. So what, what it is, what it involves is the capabilities of that gamut. I can set up, auto, set up things where it automatically sets itself up for birds, sets it up for landscape, sets it up for a cloudy day. And that's not, I program that, the camera does it. I tell the camera what to set those things for rather than automatically. So, any other questions right now? Am I moving too fast? Would anybody tell me if I was? Do you want to tell them that we have a library here just in case? Oh, yeah. They do have a library here. Uh, you, for a while, you weren't, I've got a ton of books. So I want to bring in manuals and stuff on, on cameras. So yeah, um, they do have a library here. Okay. Uh, but, but again, internet is your friend. Okay, and I'll tell you what, when we're done with the lecture today, the last slide will give you my cell phone number. You can call me, you can text me. I'll give you my email address. <clears throat> I don't charge. Okay, I work with several individuals on how to use your cameras. Okay, uh, and I was a lifetime teacher because I loved it. Okay, and I do this because I love it. Okay, I didn't mean I'd be any good anymore, but I still do it because I love it. So I love helping people to grow. Okay, so here's shutter, uh, shutter speed chart. Uh, I don't know. Can you read that very well? I'm not sure. Um, but basically, think about uh, shutter speed tells you how long that shutter is open. Okay, the faster the shutter speed, the less light that gets to the sensor. But the faster the shutter speed, it freezes motion. Okay. A lot of people think, uh, like, um, well, here, it, the highest there is one two thousandth of a second. Okay. And uh, I shoot at one four thousandth of a second almost all the time. I have a problem with camera shake. Okay. So I want to compensate for the camera shake. I shoot at one four thousandth of a second. But remember, I'm shooting birds. Uh, there's a, one called uh, King. Oh, oh yeah. What, what's the name? The, Thank you. Golden. No, I think that's uh, Ruby's around the King. Yeah. A little bird about this big. Sucker never sits still. <laughs> never. Okay. So I like to make sure that and going too fast is not an issue unless the light is low. Do you understand what I'm saying? Unless you're trying to get motion, like seeing a little blur in it, going at a high shutter speed is not a problem unless the light is low. Okay, the light's low, then you introduce the possibility of that graininess, that noise. Okay, so what you think about with shutter speed is am I trying to stop action? Okay, what's going to do it? Uh, by the way, uh, I think my camera will do one thirty-two thousand of a second. That's pretty quick. I've never used it. Okay, uh, I can't imagine what the hell I've used it for. But if I come to use it, crown kinglet. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> probably not. Okay, probably, probably won't have enough light to do it anymore. All right. So again, shutter speed. That's something you're going to have to think about on your own. 
you're going to have to think about when you go out taking pictures, what am I going to take pictures of? Am I going to be shooting my grandkids playing with the dog? You might want to shoot at 1 750th, maybe 1 1,000th one of a second, because grandkids are almost as mobile as Ruby Crown Kingdom. <laughs> okay. And I know the dogs are that way. They they have uh, they have they have uh, a chewini, okay, and I don't know what the other chinox just nouser or something. I don't know what the hell it is. It, it's a combination of uh, chihuahua and something else. Uh, very little dogs, you know, and they kind of all over and yip and stuff. Makes them crazy. What yes. One. What's the meaning of the left hand side? Uh, this here. Yeah. Oh, okay. What it's talking about stops. That's something I haven't been mentioned. Stops is the amount of light. Stops refer to F stop. And what this says, a uh, if we, how do I want to do this? Because can we put that off for a few? Yeah. Okay, really? Is that okay? Because because I don't want to pull something out of my rectum. And, and you know, I do very well. So can we hold off on that? We'll get back to it, okay? Um, it's not that I don't understand. It's, it's, um, it don't go down the right. verbiage, verbiage. How do I explain it? I'm trying to think of an appropriate um, uh, analogy. And this is basically aperture. And here, this drives people crazy now. That's a stupid one. Now notice, F1.2, that's a very big hole. That's a lot of light comes in. That is called a fast lens, 1.2. Not, not talking about shutter speed, it's talking about how much light it lets in. So it means fast in the sense that you can use a faster shutter speed, okay? So anyway, 1.2 is wide open. F16 is a very narrow, small open, okay? So what happens, people think, wait a minute, shouldn't the wide open be F16? You know, because we're used to things, as they get bigger, the numbers get bigger, okay? This is what's called a, a paradox, uh, a contradiction. Uh, it's, it's nuts. And what happens is people get hung up on that. So they're trying to get it in their head that F16 is going to be less light than F12. Yeah, Monica. The way I, I finally figured this out is, is I compared it to my eyes. The pupil in my eyes, only it's the exact opposite. When the light is the brightest, your pupils are smallest. It's the exact opposite on this. Actually, it's um, no. It, it it's the darker, the brighter your your pupils get. Yeah. Whereas this, the brighter it is, the wider it gets. Well, actually, no. The wide wideness makes it allows the more light in. Yeah. So that yeah. yeah. Okay. And and one problem with with uh, personal you know uh, epiphanies. Is they don't know not as a funny spring system. How do I talk like this? Yes. If I was going to shoot on a very bright sunny day outdoors, That's which theme? Okay. And so if it's a really cloudy day like the other day has been, then I'd shoot F4, F2A, depending. Okay. So and see that's the way to look at it. Okay. So what you need to do is put it in a context. That's relevant. You follow what I'm saying? So, and that's what you want to know. Well, if I'm going to shoot low light, I need, you know, probably uh, F12, okay? F2.8, somebody gets, okay? One thing you got to remember the lower the F stop, the more expensive the lens tends to be, okay? For example, a uh, F4, 600 millimeter Sony lens costs. $13,000. Okay, I'm going to shoot on a bright, sunny day. <laughs> okay, so, and the thing is, my, my, my Sony 200 600, okay, only cost me two grand. Yeah, only two grand. Yeah, so, yeah it, we're talking big numbers here. I'm sorry. Um, 
What's the aperture on a typical cell phone? Pardon? What's the aperture on a typical cell phone? I'm not sure. Uh, Danny, do you know what the aperture is on a typical cell phone? I have no clue. Let's ask Google. Uh, <laughs> actually, um, that's it. That's what I would do, as I would Google it. And I'm sorry, I probably should have memorized that. But, but uh, yes, sir. You know, I'm thinking of the beautiful photographs Edward West on and his group would shoot in F64. Yeah, yeah. Is there a digital equivalent of that aperture? I, I mean, it was so you, it, what, you see. He's not using it. Is he using an actual camera? Edward West on? That's for the F64. Yeah, I obviously so. Yeah, we obviously don't know. But that's so like, beautiful. They're so oh, yeah. defined. He was using a view camera. Yeah, that's that's yeah. really eight, eight by ten glass. Uh, uh, instead of film, they use glass. Okay, and that's the, it's the size. I tried to shoot the moon at right before sunrise this morning. Yeah, you see what the camera settings were down there. Oh yeah. One eight one fifty the second five point two and so five hundred. That's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. But I couldn't keep the game still enough. <laughs> yeah, you got an ace. What? Uh, this so uh, Galaxy ah, S seven. It's not the newest one, but it, the yeah. S top is one point eight. So these yeah. cameras can. And the newer ones, this one doesn't, but the newer ones shoot raw. Oh yeah, yeah. And again, um, it all depends on if it meets your needs. The key, yes, man. What I learned all of this yes, years and years ago, before digital, I was told to consider the f stops as one over. So if an f sixteen, you had one sixteen, yeah. one over five six, and that has really helped me over the years understand and reflect on f stops. Okay, that's good. Uh, and again. Um, what, but again, as you said earlier, it's your mindset. Yeah, yeah, it, it, uh, and I think, uh, and, and I'm a practical guy, you know, I don't like, I don't like to have to work harder than I need to. Yeah. I want results, but uh, I'm kind of a, like my wife and I drive each other crazy because she gives me one piece and all I want is, you know, mad magazine, so, you know, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, a lot of times it, it involves, uh, we have terrible communication problems. We've been married almost 40 years now, you know, but, uh, and it's, it's just her mind works different than mine. I also have ADHD, which, you know, and I am treated actually, but I wasn't treated until I was 52, but, uh, hey, Mike, yes, according to uncle Google. Okay. Uncle Google. Yeah. yeah uncle Google says the average. Okay. Uh, is between uh, two and two point four. That's fine. That's fine. On the cell phone. Yes. Oh, okay. Good. Thank you. Just, Unless, of course, you have a so um a Samsung, and then it's um if you shoot on the main camera and don't do anything with it, it's one point eight. But if you do ultra wide, then it goes down to one point two point five five one point or two point two oh okay but and the so camera good. when you take a shot if you go to details so mm -hmm. it'll, it'll tell you it'll tell you oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's called yeah. metadata by the way okay but no meta what the meta three or what yeah no, well about the on the phone i didn't know it did that yeah <laughs> i just could show you a picture and 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 the thing is um you would only know that if you're curious yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, and that's that's not a simple one. You have to be smart enough to know the question. Yeah, well, you that's an excellent point. You got to know what button. Yeah, yeah. Now, what were the kids when you get that? Yeah, it's it's. Uh, yeah. I, I, we digress a bit, okay? But uh, but I know. Uh, uh, hopefully, some of this helps a little bit. No, it is. Okay. Oh, I, like, I like now that I've got the cloud thing in my brain. Is yeah, going, you know, all that. That's good. Yeah, it's um uh and and again I try to correlate things to the the relevant subject if I want to mean like the question about if I got a cloudy day, what kind of SM do I want? Okay. So I don't I don't calculate the number and all that in my head. I'm thinking about well, I need more light. How do I get more light? Well, well I experience 
what what I plan to do with the cameras is is that I, basically I'm an artist, and so I need to um, I want to start broadening the types of subjects that I paint. Right, and also I take photos of my art. Yeah, and I've been doing that with my phone. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. Yeah, and, and I and I know light lights a. Uh, Light's a big thing. Oh, sure, absolutely. You know, it's it is actually that is the big thing. Now, what they what they talk about is they saying photography is painting with light. So, yeah, I uh, one of I took several camp uh, photography classes at Desert Museum, and the woman who taught it was a painter. Okay, so yeah, I I, I understand. It allows you to capture something and keep a record of. It. Very much and so. also to paint from it. And if you and you want to get the best quality image, so you can interpret the color. Well, yeah, yeah because it's again, yeah, it's just like with the cameras. I, I totally agree with your analogy on that one. It is all about light. Absolutely. And so the camera I know is not the same as if I was doing plain air and I'm out. Oh yeah. This. Oh, sure. Problem is plain air. You only have a very tiny window when the sun's just in the oh, yeah. spot. Oh yeah, absolutely. Couple out two three hours. Yeah. The rest of it, you're going to have to take a photo and hope for the best of it. Absolutely. Great point. Uh, this, by the way, talks about aperture. Uh, <clears throat> what I probably could do is, if anybody's interesting in getting enlargements of these specific uh, images here, I could probably. Uh, send them to you if you drop me a uh drop me an email yeah because what's happened is is that the thing that we printed off you can't read it yeah right I, you know I, mean, I printed it i put it there mostly for the text yeah okay uh so you know what i was sorry yeah. about so we have to take notes but yeah i can that's that's more really yeah. i gotta do is let me know okay and let me know how long you want eight and a half by eleven or whatever you know so I'm sure you don't want that. Mm -hmm. Three millimeters by six. But the auto modes choose all this. Yeah. This would be a personal choice if you're a manual shooting. In yeah. Man. Yeah. And what happens is <laughs> when I recommend to, to um, uh, anybody I talk to about this is, is when you go out and take pictures, you look at them that night. And you look at them with their metadata. That's that data and the shutter speed and that stuff and so on and so forth. And what you do is you still got in your brain what the conditions were. Light wise, cloudy, is bright, you know, near sunset, in the early morning. So what you can do is judge what auto did and whether you like it or not. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the auto is it's an algorithm. And we've all heard about algorithms and Facebook and everything else. But what it is, it says based on this amount of light, okay, uh, the best uh, shutter speed and the best app stop and the best ISO is did, 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 did. okay. But the problem is it doesn't what in it looks at the overall image. What if you just want to shoot the cat? Okay. So what happens is the limitations of auto is it forces you to accept what it thinks is the important part. Okay, yeah. The, the problem I'm having is this area, this brown line here. Yeah. In the auto mode, my cameras, I just learned there's a, a bridge, right? Yeah. With a fixed lens. Yeah. So like your butterfly photograph that yeah. you show? I can't every everything's in focus. Everything. Yeah. I can't focus on the subject and blur the background. Yeah. So can I overcome that with a some cameras you can't. There's no manual mode. There isn't? Okay. So you can't adjust make uh manual adjustments. No, it, it everything is focused. Yeah. All the way to infinity. Yeah. The whole depth of the yeah. I know that word. Yeah, very good. Yeah, outstanding. And it, I, I'd like to get past that. I'd like to do like your butterfly photo. Yeah. Yeah. Or your bird pictures where right. everything's blurry behind the hummer. Yeah. You know? What you may be looking at it, you might use that for vacations or something and maybe look at a better camera. With manual oh, yeah. Most DSLRs and most um 
bridge cameras, not all bridge cameras, I'm sorry, but most DSLRs and most mirrorless cameras have uh, the ability to manually set all your all your uh, activities. Can okay. he set his shutter speed? Or I don't I can't look at the camera. In, in, I'm yeah. moving out. Does it have a dial or a shutter panic? No. Okay. It's all yeah. the whole thing. I'll tell you what, after class, if you want me to take a look at it, I will. Sure. I don't know what it's going to be done. Yes. It seems like I have a bridge. Basically. Yeah. But trying to figure out how to learn how to do everything so fast that you can actually get the picture you want to take. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, what what you do is, is like when I go out and shoot, okay, like if I'm going to shoot birds, I shut my, I set my S down and I set my shutter speed and I pull my ISO. So I'm ready. For the day or. Yeah, but I can make adjustments and it usually, usually involves, I can change all those things with camera off my eye. Okay, and so. I, we're getting behind, and I and I, I and um, but I will not say. Don't ask me any questions because we got time to cover. There actually was an individual at the college I taught who actually said that in a human anatomy and physiology class. Somebody asked a question. And said, "I haven't got time to answer that question. We got content." <laughs> and the interesting thing is, why do you think I gave you those notes, and why do I give you those recommendations? use Google or YouTube, okay? Because you need to be able to address what I'm telling you that you don't know here. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, this one's ISO. Uh, basically, if you look, uh, and I had a pointer and everything, I, that's, that's, today is, is, I've learned much today, much, okay. So uh, if you look at the 3200 ISO, that looks pretty, that would be classified as noisy. Okay, noisy. All right. Um, so what, uh, uh, and ISO again, uh, up until probably five years ago, okay, uh, the recommended ISO in almost any situation was 100. That's your ISO for 100. And I would ask why? Because you don't want to have any noise, okay? But an ISO of 100, the limitations on shutter speed and f-stop are phenomenal, okay? Now with the newer cameras and the, the noise software, it's uh, much easier to address. But remember, the thing to remember about ISO is it adjusts the sensitivity of your sensor. And now if you don't have to worry about noise so much with software and the type of camera you have, and by the way, one of the recommendations I made when someone purchases a new camera is shoot a series of pictures in certain light conditions, keep decreasing the amount of light, either uh, uh, use, you know, like F16 or something like that, or, you know, one three thousandths of a second. But you want to decrease and you want to see when your images start to show noise. So it's going to tell you at what ISO that you might have to consider, you know, uh, maybe using, you know, putting a limitation on your ISO, like I have floating ISO, but I set a maximum ISO and a minimum. So that takes into consideration. So, uh, and obviously, I think you're finding out that um, that uh, photography is, is a little bit more than just you know buying a new camera so this basically is is just a rundown uh this graphic on the left basically shows the relationship of speed okay the decrease of light f32 is low light uh one half a second is going to be more light right because it's open longer okay and then what you're going to see as far as noise goes Okay, so um, and this is a little guideline over on the right, uh, daylight, 100 to 200 ISO. Uh, extra low light, fireworks, something like that. You might need an ISO of 3200, okay? So in these things, you can get readily off the internet, all right? Metering modes are uh, evaluated, evaluated, center weighted, and stopped. What metering is talking about is the light meter that's built into your camera. Okay, most 
times what you'll see with uh, in auto modes is it'll be evaluated. It looks at the whole frame and evaluates the light from all over. So it's going to give you an average. Okay. Now with birds shooting a small bird, you may have to crop the hell out of the image. You use spot. Why? Because you want to know what the light situation is with that bird. You know what I'm saying? You don't care what the background is like. Okay. Uh, that center weighted in spot is even more so. Center weighted, like you've got like uh, shooting a, the the seagull, and I'm not sure what the hell the other one is. Uh, there, that would probably, uh, you probably wouldn't go evaluate if you might go center weighted. But then if you're looking at, let's say, a bird, small bird, or depending how far away it is, how small it appears in the frame as you're tracking it, you'd use probably spot. And this is something, you know, that, that comes with practice, okay? Um, and white balance, I'm not going to talk about white balance points. Uh, by the way, different lights have different different temperatures, they call them. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and what, uh, what I do is I just flip it on our white panel. Uh, most pro usually use on a white panel, unless there's a situation they know it can be a critical factor. Okay. So, uh, and let's say I think the next slide gives the temperatures. Yeah. Uh, and if you look, uh, things that are bluish, how many people have taken pictures and see they all have a blue temp for you? Okay. Um, oftentimes that can be uh, from taking a picture with different kind of lighting. Okay. Now we've got all kinds of different lighting. Now we've got incandescent, we've got LCDs, we've got LEDs, we've got tungsten. Okay. So what happens in each of those gives a different light or hue. So, um, <clears throat> and what the sophisticated cameras is today, if you go to auto white balance, it generally takes care of it. But if it doesn't, when you do post-processing, you can adjust that in post-processing, okay? So I don't usually emphasize that a lot unless it becomes a critical problem, okay? Um, now focusing modes, we got continuous focusing mode. That is the one I use all the time because I shoot stuff that moves. Okay. You don't need continuous focusing when you're shooting elephant head. Okay. Uh, it's not going anywhere. All right. Um, so again, I shoot activities that involve, I shoot, used to shoot the grandkids, sports all the time and stuff. So I use a continuous focusing mode. Uh, one shot, like for a uh, portrait, I, I did not shoot this picture. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <clears throat> portrait is kind of like a landscape in a way. And, you know, uh, you're looking for detail, you're looking for color and so on and so forth. Um, so one shot, but I, I almost never put my camera on one shot. You know, also automatic autofocus mode. Okay, uh, I call that tracking. I can lock on the bird and my camera. The camera doesn't move, but the focus point follows that bird. Okay, that's where bird eye focus comes in handy because you lock on the bird's eye and the pictures will be that sharp, assuming you have fast enough shutter. Okay, and it will be followed. Okay, so in my a lot of times my lectures are biased towards you know the thing I'm most experienced with, the thing I love the most, birds. But um, but actually, like like I say, if I run on a bird, I'll shoot dragonfly. You know, so um, but these are things you can learn, and down in the bottom it tells you what the settings were: one sixtieth of a second, after f sixteen, ISO of a hundred, and Flash was fired. The flash in this instance is probably a case of fill flash. And fill flash is a whole different topic. We're not going to touch on that at all right now. Okay, yes, sir. So it's your camera on a tripod? Uh, this I didn't shoot this, but no, no I'm seven birds. I do the handheld. 
Well, I had I had a, a rotator cuff surgery uh, last year, so I had uh, I couldn't hold, handle my 200 600 too heavy. So I was able to do it at Whitewater Draw just last week for a while. I can't do it for very long. So what I do is I go with what's called a monopod. It, it helps stabilize the camera. But I can, but I've got a 100 400 that I go to, but it doesn't have the reach of the 200 600. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So a lot of times I want that 600 millimeter reach rather than 400. So and I'm working on it. I'm working on building a strength in my arm so I can handle. It. But it gets it's it's time. Uh, you know, you're talking seven pounds, eight pounds. That's uh, that's a fair piece of weight. Okay, how are we doing here? How about uh, auto focus modes? These are probably extremely difficult to read. Um, and single shot autofocus means when you take a picture, focus stops. Okay. Now, I do something. Everybody's aware that the way you focus for digital SLRs or your uh, bridge cameras or your uh, mirrorless cameras is you half push your shutter, right? You know how difficult it is for me to half put a pink yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm not very good at it. So I use something called back button focus, which means I focus the camera with a button on the back of the camera. So I can focus, okay? And when I'm ready to shoot, I just squeeze the shutter. So if you're dealing with half squeezing, uh, I find it extremely difficult. Some people, you try to teach them back button focus. Oh, I hate that. I look the other way. Back. But the problem with that is when you push it down, you're focusing. So you have no choice. You can't change the focus. So you release it up. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you're committed. Okay. Birds can move and so on and so forth. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, I'm a firm believer in something called back button focus. And there's all kinds of information available on it. Okay. And it's something that takes a while to get used to. Okay, I was shooting, you know, with with the shutter for probably started in 68. So I probably was shooting for oh god, I don't know. I don't think I switched the bad buttons in about 2015. So I just got a hell of a lot of years. Yes, ma'am. Have you tried dot site photography for your birds where you, where you put like a, a scope? Dot, like a dot, dot, yeah, dot. yeah. You mean put your camera on it or something? Well, no, you put you put the dot site uh, on your camera. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I took a class like, on it. Yeah, at the Desert Museum. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jay Kersa. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I I haven't worked with it much. I I thought it was an interesting concept. But, I thought it was too, but it just feels so bulky. I just yeah, used to it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, and now with with uh with. Uh, automatic focus and tracking, it kind of uh, negates the need, you know, but not everybody's got a camera like I got. Okay, so, um, and again, I will, I'll tell you what, I'll shoot you these images, take a look at those. Basically, what it does is give you a little more specifics about focusing and so on and so forth. All I'm trying to do is, is touch on things. What I'm trying to do is generate questions. <laughs> okay? And see, this gentleman here is superb. Thank you very much. And I'm genuinely serious. You make the class better because you show me what people are not quite getting. Okay. And again, I don't read minds. And, and I can only respond to a question if I get one. If I want to say, I used to try to anticipate. Never worked it very well. So uh, drive modes. Okay. Uh, most of you, how many people are familiar with the concept of drive modes? Okay, uh, you probably have. <coughs> uh, think about uh, when you do the well, I want to the grandkids group picture with me in it, right? What do you do? Shutter delay, you know, uh, five seconds is not our time, so I do 10 seconds, but that's a drive mode. But when we talk about drive mode in context of Let's see, um, activity like grandkids running around or uh, dogs or whatever, or birds. I, most people think single shooting, okay? And one of the first things I talked about when I, when I started my SIG was 
you're thinking about birds and so on and so forth. Birds move, okay? You know, wildlife move. So I said, and what I suggest was shoot a three shot, three to five shot burst. Okay. And what, what I discovered is the first shot might be a little a tad blurry from camera shape, but the others back sharp. Because the only picture that's going to be affected by the squeezing of the shutter is the first one. So the second, third, fourth, and fifth will all be back sharp. So what that does is one, it helps to guarantee, if at all possible, a tack sharp photo. Okay. And it also, especially in moving subjects, it catches action that you may not have gotten with a single shot. I, I rarely, if ever, do single shot. But that's just me, you know, because I'm always, I want to make sure I got as much as I can get as far as a potential quality image. Okay, if that makes any sense. So single shooting is what most of your problem. Does anybody shoot burst on a regular basis? Mm -hmm. I know you guys do. You do? I did, but I didn't know I could set it for three to five because I have. Well, hours. actually, you control three to five by your finger. Okay. So how long you hold it? Okay. So uh, uh, my camera will do thirty shots a second if I set it for that, as long as I squeeze it that long. Okay. Okay. So you control by you know uh, by releasing the shutter. You know, just lifting your finger off. Yeah. So that's how I get a three to five birds. Just practice. You know. Yeah. Uh, I have three modes <clears throat> on my uh, the bridge and on my uh, A1 that's slow, medium, fast, and high. Okay, high is 30. Fast is 20 or high in plus. So you can shoot that, and I generally shoot medium. Okay, uh, low is too slow, medium is just right, and high is not I'm still trying to figure out everything on my camera. I mean, it's, oh, it's, okay. it's, got it. it's a Lumix, it's a bridge camera. Yeah. It goes up to 600, does a lot of the things you're talking about. I mean, yeah. it's a great little bridge camera, and I'm yeah. still trying to figure it out. But I've, actually, I've got some good shots. Actually, I started with a bridge in 2007 yeah. with bird photography. Yeah. A Lumix. Yeah. So, uh, so final, we talked about remote. You can control your cameras with your phone snap. So it's a little software interface with the camera. Comes in handy on a tripod or something like that. We had used to have to use the cable bits. Now they've got wireless releases. Okay. Those are drive more. Now, here is your um thank you. I, I knew this <laughs> I was struggling with the word for exposure triangle. Okay. So Let's think about it for a minute. We've got, they put shutter speed on that bottom. It could be anywhere. You know, ISO on one side, aperture on the other. And what you have to understand as you increase shutter speed, you decrease light, okay? So what do you have to do to compensate for the decrease of light? Increase your f-stop in the sense of, like we lower it to F12 or F3 or some F4, F5, six. you follow what I'm saying? So if we decrease light available, we have to, if we decrease the time of exposure, we have to increase the amount of light coming in to allow, for, uh, allow a proper exposure. Okay, do you understand that? I, I think, is that intuitive to you at all? Well, what I was thinking is if you were shooting indoors. Yeah then you would just have to add another light source. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what all the, you know, the portraits yeah. and stuff. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, That would be the same concept. Oh, pretty much, yeah. Because uh, you, uh, it's very difficult indoors to get enough light by adjusting that sound and stuff like that. So, and remember, the slower your shutter speed, the greater possibility of camera wear, camera shape. Okay, that's where a tripod comes in under certain circumstances. So um, we could do a whole two plus hour lecture on the exposure triangle. Uh, just know for now, and there is no test, okay? Just know for now uh, that the three factors that are integrated to, for proper exposure, shutter speed, 
f-stop and ISO, okay? And just another example of the, uh, 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 an applied situation. And again, like I say, I'll send all of these images out. Uh, it probably would help immensely. Yes, yeah, sir. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Here's my question. Sure. Blurred background. Yeah. That I was asking you earlier. Oh, okay. That's so the larger aperture blurs the background and focuses. Yeah. F, F, 16. You get a great depth of field. Okay. At F, let's say one two or F two A, what happens is it blurs the background because the depth of field. We're going to see a slide on that in just a couple of minutes. Okay. But everybody thinks the only thing that controls depth of field is F stop. And under most normal situations, that's probably the case. But when you're a bird photographer shooting a 600 millimeter or a 400 millimeter lens, and you could be as far away as 250 feet to as close as four feet, like some of the shorebirds and stuff like that. So what's, what happens is there's other things that come into play with that stuff. But for general population, all they ever talk about relative to depth of field is your f stop. Okay. And what they're talking about is a fast lens gives shallow depth of field. Remember the fast lens is F12, F28, that type of thing. Okay. Did I answer your question or did I just blow you off? I'm getting there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I didn't want you to think I blew you I off. just want to take better pictures. Okay. Hey, hey. <laughs> Trust me, I'm still working on that. Okay. All right, shutter priority. Okay. What it does, it really, we talk about shutter priority. What are we controlling? We control the shutter. Like you talk about bird photography. Oh, you got to shoot shutter priority. Okay. But you get the other guy who says, wait a minute, you need to shoot amateur priority. Control your depth of field. Okay. And I look at it with moving subjects, shutter priority is, I used to shoot shutter priority. Now, I, as I said, I shoot manual. So what happens is the faster your shutter speed, okay, one, two thousand to the second, one, three thousand, so on and so forth, the less light that is going to be exposed to the sensor, okay? Because it's real like that, you know, that's not really that, but whatever. But the point is, so how do we compensate for that? So we need X amount of light to get a proper exposure. So if I increase my shutter speed, what do I have to do? I've got to get more light in, which means I've got to move my S stop to where it brings in more light. F12, F28, F4. Matter of fact, on your larger lenses, F4 is considered a fast lens. Okay. So what you've got to understand is the relationship. You're going to leave because you were bored. Dude, I'm an old man. I can't go the hey, That's all right. You don't have to go You are. Just, normally, normally I would have given you a break. But I've been on a roll. And there's no recess. So I had even off. Oh, no problem. You are always going to get this funny. Yeah, you feel verbally abused. I feel much relieved. <laughs> if nothing has happened in one hour and 35 minutes, you now feel more relieved. <laughs> nothing to do with me, but. You know, the old thing is, is if you don't, if you don't want to hear the answer, don't ask the question. <laughs> I knew what the answer was. And I, I asked the question. What I said, I know you did. It ingratiates you to, the, uh, to your brothers and sisters. I'm sure they appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Some of us are jealous. Some of them. Some of them have to run in a minute. Uh, so, um, oh, I want some more track on. Oh, okay. Sorry about fast sharing. Okay, so this basically <laughs> is addressing the issue of shutter priority and how it affects the uh, exposure uh, triangle, okay? 
this one, this is this is uh, why I include. Uh, well, it's 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 too small to to read. Okay, and it's there's too much information. I broke a cardinal rule of doing it. Okay, and I should know better. But like I said, I'll include these slides. Okay, so you can look at them. And I think I'm going to include a couple of uh, links to different websites that may be helpful. Okay, I um, I'm talking about aperture priority here. Uh, and again, uh, uh, welcome back, Gene. I just uh, I was just in here with some time. Oh, great. okay. Because I, I talked briefly about the fact that the majority of you, uh, when you think of depth of field, you think of that stuff. Okay, and um, the uh, uh, we'll get to a slide in a minute where there are at least three other factors involved in depth of field. So this one would be a good one to look at. This one you take and sit and read it and look at. It. And does it make sense or doesn't it make sense? If it doesn't make sense, why? And, you, and then you need to ask somebody. Email, text me, call me, yell, okay? But, you know, but get your answer. And the best time to get the answer is when you're in the middle of the question. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, this one. Okay. This one I definitely will share. To explain to you, depth and feel has a profound effect, uh, is affected mostly by aperture. Okay. What we call a fast lens gives a very narrow depth of field. You know, that uh, I, I, I found this uh, it's very uh, interesting term when I first started my city. The word boca. How many people heard boca? Boca. Yeah. And I, and I, I, I said this, this young lady came to the, to the city and stuff. And I said, no, I had no idea what the boca was. She said, what? I said, no, I don't have any kind of boca. She, she got in wet. So anyway, um, I I thank her for coming. Okay, and um, I was fortunate she never returned. But anyway, um, the other things that involve depth of field is focal length. Okay, when I talk focal length, I'm talking. Okay, you guys probably think 200 millimeters is is a long lens. Okay. <laughs> 300 mil, 400 mil, okay. And like for bird photography, they right, recommend 600 mil. Okay, the longer the, yes. Oh, you were just- Oh, I can see. 600 mil. You're not talking about fish, are you? We're in <laughs> all right. Um, so the longer the focal length, the um, wider the depth of field, okay? So most of what you shoot is going to be in focus with a long lens. Okay. Now, how many people have shot with uh with wide angle lenses? Mm -hmm. Okay. And like even fish on it, well, everything's in focus, right? There's nothing blurred out anywhere. Okay, other camera things on it. But what it is, a very wide angle lens, okay. Um, it's everything's pretty much in focus. Okay. Let's see. What do we uh, want to get? Oop. Okay. This one, I'm going to have to get that to you. And what happens is I get turned around sometimes. So, proximity of the subject. Okay. How close that subject is to you. Okay. Determines. What that field is going to be. Okay. So if you get a, let's say, uh, I keep, when I think about this topic, I think about uh, somebody who brought a picture into my sig of a little sandpiper, Sherbert. Okay. And she picked her F stop up at 14. Okay. Which should increase your depth of field. Right. Okay. But what happened is, it didn't increase the depth of field. Okay. Why? Because the proximity was so close. It couldn't have that effect. If I want to say it, 
what we're talking about here is physics. Okay, we're talking about physics. Okay, if you're shooting standard lenses, standard situations, you want to adjust depth of field. F stop is your guy. Okay, but if you're dealing with, for example, shooting a sandpiper that's 10 feet away from you on the shore and you're shooting at 600 millimeter, ain't nothing gonna <laughs> help with the depth of field issue at all. All right, so yes. for example, the moose up there. Yeah. Or the elk. Yeah. Okay. Not a herd. Um, That's enough. Assuming, assuming here, whoever shot that wasn't with my wife who said, keep getting closer. To that. <laughs> I got to get a picture of it while we're in Yellowstone. And I'm looking, well, anyway. So if you're, you know, like you were with one of your bird pictures that you were talking yeah. about, you were across the pond. Yeah. Then you want to make it look on the actual final photo, you want to make it look like you were only a few feet away so that everything in the background then looks like it, it's up close. As opposed, and probably he was, or whoever shot that, who was probably a fair distance away, and yeah. all of the trees, I, there is some depth there, yeah. but it is not, uh, it's not blurry. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of what you're talking about in terms of depth of field, yeah. in terms of whatever your purpose is in your right. kind of competition. Right. Yeah, you don't want the background distracting it from. By the way, I'll let you in a secret. You want to get a picture of something that can move. Like when I shoot hawks, it's fine. Yeah. When first time I see it, I focus and shoot. Three or four pictures. Okay, five steps forward, focus and shoot. All five pictures. Five more steps. Focus and shoot, buy more pictures. And you keep doing that to so get to a point where you flush the bird. Okay? The idea is you want to get closer, but if getting closer does nothing but flush the animal, right. it's a waste. Okay? No. So what, what you do is you make the line, you know, maybe far away. And a lot of times you do it, I just food you saw that. You know what I mean? So what happens is it doesn't even make ten steps. Doesn't make a difference. The idea is you shoot multiple distances, trying to get closer. Okay, because the thing is, when you start walking up on the bird, boom, he's gone. Yeah, then get then get a get it. Why you shoot yeah. fifteen thousand shots? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's true. But yeah, that's that's what you do. So what you think about is is you got a choice of getting a picture, an image, or not getting one. So I always err on the side of getting the image. I can delete, you know, those images that I don't need. But the thing is, is I want to make sure that I got a shot. So yeah, because I'm I'm going back to Yellowstone for the third time. I'm still trying to get grizzlies and and wolves and, and moose and stuff so i'm going in it i'm going in May. so anyway so and again i'll be sharing these slides with you okay yeah three things to remember and it only applies to long lenses like 300 mil or higher they can affect depth of field and so can distance to the sun okay so in most of your cases unless you decide to get into you know, wildlife photography, bird photography, that's probably not going to be an issue. Okay. This one, uh, I mean, this is a good reference card, by the way. Matter of fact, somebody gave me one, a laminated. I'm not going to do that for you, but uh, right. I'll be sending this for you. Okay. And it basically just shows the relationship. Okay. What happens at certain <laughs> shutter speed, that stops in ISO. Okay. Metering modes. Uh, we talked a little bit about a little bit earlier about evaluative uh, spot focus, center weighted focus, not focus metering. I'm sorry. I had a hell of a time when they talk metering. They're talking light. Okay, light metering. When they're talking about focus, they're talking about sharpness of an image. Okay, so and I always screw that up. Um, to me, like I said, I generally go with center weighted or spot focusing on birds. Okay, uh, <clears throat> but a lot of people would use evaluative, like landscapers. 
use the value of all the time, unless there's a specific area, you know, that you're trying to get, make that the center point of focus. You follow what I'm saying? Of, of the light there is what you're concerned about. Okay? So those are metering modes. All right? Histogram. A lot of people, you mentioned histogram and show you pictures. Pictures, they go. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, it's a histogram with a great clip. But don't worry about it yet. You follow what I'm saying? If you're getting the impression in the last hour and 45 minutes that there's a lot to think about here, you're right. Okay, and you have to set a priority. If you try to learn everything at the same time, you're gonna you're gonna set that camera in the closet and you're even gonna touch it again. Okay. So the thing is, it's like your priorities, okay? Um, but basically, one thing to uh, remember about histogram, if the big bumpy parts are on the left, you've underexposed. If the bumpy parts are on the right, you've overexposed. If the bumpy parts are in the middle, just right. <laughs> Under most of the things. Okay? Called the golden Goldilocks method, you know? <laughs> Y'all remember Goldilocks, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, and here it gives you some additional ex uh, examples of histogram. Now, oh my God, we're oh. to the last slide. Is that no. a no? No questions. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll read this to you. I know you can read it, but I'll read it. Any questions, comments, or suggestions <laughs> related to this presentation, a future presentation, or any topic related to photography? You can call me or text me at Michael McMahon at 810-516-0220. That is a cell phone. You can text me or call me. My email address is Mike, M-I-K-E-4, F-O-R-E. I used to golf. <laughs> yeah, then my wife and I both retired. We decided we couldn't afford to golf. <laughs> All right, so at Comcast.net. Now, a question. Yes. Amherst. I've got a 15 year old D70. Yeah. And I know the answer you're going to tell me is learn how to use that before you buy another camera. Well, <laughs> no, if you can afford another camera and are willing to take the time, I would never tell anybody not to buy a new camera if they're genuinely serious about. But as you pointed out, some of these things are thousands of dollars. Is there a place where you can reasonably buy like a D850? Oh, yeah. Less than, yeah. Uh, less well, than the uh, price of your uh, there. Oh, just, just Google used camera gear. Uh, well, there's a place. Tucson has a used camera. Yeah. I mean, a couple. Monument camera. Monument. Yeah. Tips on how to evaluate. Uh, uh -oh. Take him with you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dave, well, review.com. Dereview.com reviews all the cameras that are still in production or available. And the reviews are done by owners and users, yeah. which makes it really nice. And also, also, what you can do is, for example, they're going to be coming out with a new uh, Sony um, uh, 9 uh, 3, I believe this uh this coming year so you can buy a sony uh uh a9 or a92 much cheaper i have a tendency to look i rarely buy used equipment okay uh, i did buy a used uh battery pack for my uh my backup camera um so you couldn't go wrong with buying if you can afford a new of a an older model camera, like an 850. It's been around for years, okay? Um, but uh, lenses, <clears throat> uh, life expectancy and, and quality tends to be better than bodies. The camera body changes. They put all the new buzzes and whistles on. So when it comes to lenses, okay, lenses, and, and that's one thing I just want to make in passing. <laughs> when it comes to you talking about DSLRs, you're talking about mirror cameras and so on and so forth, the most important purchase you're going to make is lens. You know, uh, you can go to Costco and get a package deal. Okay, get a, get a, like a 55 to 200 mil lens and a 
you know, another uh, body of stuff. That's fine. But be prepared to upgrade the body in the future. Because uh, part of the problem when you buy a kit like that, kit lenses are not the best quality. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I was just thinking about lenses back in the film days. It was helpful to have a solar or a polarizing cap. Oh, yeah. With the there's, digital cameras. Yeah, yeah. polarizing comes in handy when you're shooting, like where there's a lot of reflection. It, it comes in handy landscape for bringing clouds out. It can help eliminate uh, reflections and stuff like that. Layer. Uh, yeah. Do you use a cap? I, uh, or a hood or anything? Like oh, that? yeah. Well, by the way, everybody, uh, I mean, I never shoot without my hood on. Okay, never. I don't care if it's cloudy or whatever. Because the hood not only, you know, shades the lens, it also protects the lens if you drop it. Okay? So, and... Is that what's on the end of... Again, I don't hear these. Uh, is that what's on the end of those lenses there? Yeah. Yes. Those are lens hoods. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And... Uh, the big and that's probably a 600 mil the guy's got there. And some of them get humongous. You know what I mean? So, you know, lens hood is, is to me, is essential. Okay. Uh, and you always should use it, you know, not just to prevent, uh, you know, sun flare and so on and so forth. It also protects the lens itself. Okay. Uh, but Rather than a kit lens or, or something like a Costco or Sam's, you know, if you're thinking about becoming serious about the hobby of photography, you know, I would look at, uh, let's say, a 70 Mark II or a 7D uh, or something like that. Or if, and the problem I have with used equipment, unless I would never buy on eBay, okay? I I would only buy from a reputable dealer that guarantees for at least three periods. I would never buy from an individual unless I knew them. You know, I mean, you know, somebody my SIG I've been working with for five years, four or five years, you know, I would not hesitate, but I wouldn't buy from a stranger off of, uh, you know, but do some research, you know, and look for, um, um, you know, like I say, you want to get the best camera you can afford that's not going to handicap you because you got to figure you're going to buy a camera and you're going to have to buy a decent lens with it. If I want to say, and you know, unless it's the bridge camera, of course, you know, uh, um, RX 10 4 is an excellent camera, okay, as a bridge camera. Um, it's got, as far as bridges go, it's got the largest sensor for bridge one inch sensor. But again, you know, it does have its limitations. So the thing, and, and you want to, got questions for me or something like that? Just send me a text to call me. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what kind of uh, camera is you use on a drone? I have no clue. There. Gene can talk about that. <laughs> I, I, are you, I didn't want to get into drone What kind of camera do they use on a drone? They're um, probably equivalent to a GoPro. In the general sense, and most of them are made for video. I mean, are used for video. Yeah. Very seldom does anybody take just still pictures off their drone. Um, they're usually 4K, depending on. That's the difference between a hundred dollar drone and a three hundred fifty dollar drone is using the camera. Oh. Okay. So I'm sorry, no help on that. Yes, sir. Yeah, question. So you said you started out with a lumen. Yeah. I have one. Uh, okay. Bridge and yeah, and I'm. I'm confused. Yeah. This this might help. Oh, okay. Well, uh, <clears throat> how old is the moment? Uh, three years. Oh, that's not that's not very old at all. So, um, yeah, I like to say I started with Linux back in 2007. So yeah, Perfect. yeah. Um, and when I when I you know Brad, I'm sorry, Monica. I was questions. just going to say yeah. Um, actually, can I make a plug? Oh yeah, sure. Okay, Mike. Wednesday afternoons, 1.30, you can come down here to the club, or he also zooms it, but he does a burning nature SIG. In it, those of us who are in the SIG take our photographs, We put our, he puts our photographs up, and then we do, um, I would not call it a critique at all, but what we do is, is, is we look at it and think, okay, how could this, how could we have taken a better picture? How could I have taken that shot 
And and how should I have set my ISO? How should it, should I be should I have used the floating ISO considering that, that I am one just like you? I've only been birding for what now a year and a half? Yeah, I'm about to. about a year and a half. And um and I am still like this smart when it comes to what to how to set my photos. He has been trying really hard to get me off of auto. Uh, <laughs> she's got uh, she's got, the same. she's got the bridge camera that I've got. So and that's that's a means just a backup camera. Yeah. I have I have a, a Sony A1 and I had an A92 as my backup. And now see, I I posted on one of my sites on, on Facebook. I said, well, I'm I'm thinking of selling my A92 and buying an A74. It's a new Sony that just came out. And it's got 33 megapixels and it's got bird eye focus. They said, why are you because because uh the uh A92 is so much better, but see to them it's so much better. But to me, I like the extra megapixel and I especially love bird eye focus. Okay, so that's my focus, my crown focus. So that's what I went with. And people can think I'm crazy, but I love it. You know, and I think that one was like 2,500 or something like that. But, but um, I guess I throw numbers on when people think I'm nuts. But, uh, uh, but there are different things you need to look at. But if you're genuinely serious, and I mean serious about people, it doesn't have to be bird photography, wildlife, landscape. There are certain tools that you need. And the thing is, remember, you're not, see, I tried selling some of my stuff after a while. Everybody in the world has got photos for sale. So I, I stopped shooting to sell. I, I shoot for me now. So, and, and the goal is, the goal is, is my wife says, why are you taking a picture of that raven? You've got a ton of pictures, Raven. I'm looking for the picture of the raven. Okay, the picture. The one that is, and you'll never get the picture. So I keep on shooting. By the way, let me mention megapixels and stuff. Don't be fooled by megapixels. Okay, megapixels are important. Sensor size is more important. Okay, so you know, uh, it's like the old story when you walked into the computer store ten years ago. Oh, you need this much RAM, and you need this big a hard drive. You need this fast to process it. Most of that stuff's malarkey. If all you're going to do is Facebook, email, and Google, you don't need a lot of stuff. So, so you determine what you need by what you want to do, and you don't have to. You don't have to do it, you know, because you want to buy. If you go buy the cheapest thing you can buy, you won't be happy. Okay, because if you're looking for perfection for yourself, you want the best tools you can afford because you do hobbies for you. Okay, I do this. This is this is for me. This is fun. Okay, and and I love doing it. I'm not as good as I used to be, but I'm so okay. I think. <laughs> Did anybody get terribly bored? <laughs> anybody offended? Please be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm offended that I have been. Okay. Um, I'm brave. But to have uh, you being really brave. Uh, no, I've been around a long time. People tell me when I was teaching classes or whatever, when I was teaching an exam prep, people found me. Oh my God, you're so unprofessional. We <laughs> know I'm professional. Yeah. Well, I went to my lectures and usually jeans and a shirt and a you know vest and stuff like that. When when I was teaching in school for the first ten years, I thought I was doing coat and tie, okay, flats. And I took a sabbatical, okay, in college and stay pay or take a semester. I came back jeans, sweatshirt, or vest. Actually, wore I always wore a um, a argyle vest. Oh, there. Argyle socks. <laughs> Argyle socks. These are penny loafers, but I wore tassel loafers. Okay. 
And one Halloween, one class, everybody came in <laughs> with a face mask of my face. <laughs> and everybody had an argyle. <laughs> okay, castle, shoe, uh, it's great. And I took that as the greatest compliment. I thought that was terrific. But it's been great. Uh, thank you for putting up with you for the last two hours. I love it. Well, I'm curious about texting, emailing, or calling. Yes, ma'am. Well, I think we're all going to be amazing. No, I'll send them off. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm that's my camera. I think I can turn it. I don't want to bend the camera. About my pay is $400. Uh, no. We'll continue with the camera. I thought we would do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can figure out how to do this before I want to say that. But, you know, um, actually, if you were, um, 